So now, one of the other speakers on the panel, Van Badham, who, who, who uh, described, was described not by me as a writer, activist, and Twitter queen, um, which is, I think, like being the red queen in, in Alice in Wonderland, something like that. I went on her Twitter site today to find out how many followers she has, but apparently I'm not one of them because I'm blocked. And, <laughs> and it kind of surprises me because um, I didn't know that I'd ever tried to follow her. But anyways, she said, and this was interesting, she said, I'm a Christian and a Marxist. And I thought, no. Um, you can only be a Christian and a Marxist if you, well, there's a couple of ways. One is, one is that you just want to be all things that are good at once, regardless of their internal contradictions. And so that would be one reason. And another reason would be that you don't know anything about Christianity or Marxism. Um, and, and, and then the next would be that you're just compartmentalized. You know, like, there's this idea that people can't hold two contradictory thoughts in their mind at the same time. Well, that idea was formulated by someone who, who's never met a human being. Because you can hold like 50 contradictory thoughts in your head at the same time, as you know whenever you argue with someone that you love, because you love them, and maybe you even like them, but you also hate them, and you wish that you could just crush them right there and then. And so, like, that's a lot of contradictory ideas, and that's probably only like half the contradictory ideas that are running through your mind at the moment. You know, so, man, you're so full of contradictions that it's just beyond belief. And the only time... I mean, I know this because I read undergraduate essays. And what's, what's interesting about undergraduate essays is it's so interesting because the undergraduate will make a claim in paragraph one, and then in paragraph seven will make the opposite claim. And they won't notice that they're intellectually incommensurate. And, you know, that might happen 30 times in the essay. And, and the reason that that works is because, well, they haven't been called on the paradoxes, but also because they haven't had to live the paradoxes through, because you really only straighten out your thought when you have, like, impulse A and impulse B, and they conflict at the same time, right? And you can either do one or the other, but not both. You know, if it's A today and B tomorrow, well, then you can be, you can hold those ideas simultaneously, but if it's A or B right now, then you have to decide, is A more important or is B more important? You have to put them in a hierarchy, and then you have to act them out, and you have to see what happens. And so then you find out if you're full of contradictions, and part of the way that you iron out your contradictions, which is very, very hard to do, is that you go out and you do a whole bunch of things in the world, like Socrates did. You go out and you have your adventure in the world, and you put your ideas to the test, and those that work out in a paradoxical or counterproductive manner you dispense with or put lower on the priority list or something like that. And that's how you discover that, you know, you can't hold incommensurate views simultaneously. 